In this video, I want to walk through just the bare basics of how the 2D sketch works in Onshape. The first thing I'm going to do is come up here to the top corner and I'm going to click on Sketch. This is a two-dimensional sketch. You can see right now that its name is Sketch 1 and it also popped up down here. That'll be important here in just a moment. It's also red right now because I've not established a location for the sketch to actually live in my environment. The software always starts out with three different planes that you can choose from. We can make more later, but these are the three that you have to start with. I have front, I have top, and I have right. So I can pick any of the three of these to establish some kind of location, or at least which way my first sketch is facing. I'll go ahead for this example and pick front. As soon as I do that, you can see that sketch one is now black, sketch one is now black, so I have assigned a location for it, and all my tools are now active. Um, for doing two-dimensional things. I like to draw two-dimensional things in a two-dimensional view and right now I'm looking at this in 3D. So whatever plane I picked, I'm going to come up here to this cube and I'm going to pick that plane so it'll straighten it up for me. So now when I draw something like a rectangle, it will look like a rectangle. Alright, let's look at a couple of tools. Well, the first one's going to be the line tool. As I go to the line tool, I encourage you to make your first click always on the origin. So no matter which one of these tools you're using, I encourage you to make that first click that you do off of that origin that's there. So as I click on it, I can see that that icon that popped up there kind of looks like a sideways T. That's a coincidence. That means I've actually locked on to that place. And as I move away here, you can see I have another icon attached to my mouse that's horizontal. I also have one that's vertical, I'll have perpendicular, parallel, um, all those types of things that will be attached to my mouse when they're available. So if I wanted to draw something like a triangle, I could come straight up, I could come straight down, and sometimes if you're close enough to the next point, it'll automatically draw this little dotted orange line to say that you're there. If it doesn't come up on its own, just bring your mouse down, grab that point, and start dragging it out. And it'll tell you that you're directly in line with that. So then I can click again, and you'll notice that right now this is an open shape, and as soon as I close it, it will turn shaded for me. It's going to be extremely important for some of the next steps, is that everything we do is what's considered to be a closed region. So that's kind of how the line tool works. Um, you can click anywhere you want, anywhere you want, you can make whatever odd shapes as you want, but until you close it, it will not shade that in. So that's going to be extremely important later. Okay, so what else can I do? I also have the rectangle tool, and there's two of them. I have a cornered rectangle and a center point rectangle. The cornered rectangle is two clicks. My first click will be one part of the rectangle, and then my second click will be the next part of the rectangle. At any point in time, when you have something drawn on your screen, you can grab lines and you can adjust them, and you can also grab points and you can adjust them. So the same thing works for the rectangle. I can grab the rectangle and I can make it skinnier, taller, so I can do everything off of corners, and I can also do things off of lines. The center point rectangle works the same way, it's still two clicks, but your first click is the center point of the rectangle. So once I click once, then I can come out and define whatever my height and width are going to be. And they're still editable, but the nice part is you now have another point where you can move the entire rectangle around, unlike the normal corner rectangle. Once it's there, if I want to move the whole, whole thing around, I can't very well. I have to grab corners and I can scoot it around, but the center point gives me a, the ability to kind of scoot it around. Um, as a whole. I also have some other ways to move things around, but that's just one. Okay, so the line tool, the rectangle tool, or the two-point two uh, rectangle tool, and then the center point. What else do we have? Um, the circle tool. I like this a lot. It works just like the rectangle, but instead of going from one corner to another corner, it works just like this center point rectangle does. So the first time you're going to click will establish a center point for the circle, and the next one is going to be your radius or diameter, however you want to consider it. So the center point circle um, works fairly easy. You also have a three-point ellipse, and then you have our three-point circle, and you have an ellipse. The three-point circle will just allow me to click on three separate points, um, and then I've got the ellipse, so it's a three-click. So you've got the center point you have one of your radiuses and then you have your second radius. The three-point arc, um, there are a couple different arcs, but the three-point arc 
you click one to start the arc, you click one to stop the arc, and then you have another one that will establish the radius. At any point in time when you want to drop a tool and go on to a new one, so once I create a rectangle, you can see that my mouse is still a crosshair or a plus. If I hit escape on the keyboard, it will drop that tool. I can also just right click and say escape rectangle. Well, otherwise, once you have the rectangle, it thinks that you might want to draw another one and another one and another one and so on. So then question comes, how do I delete things? Well, if you highlight something, you can hit backspace on your keyboard and it will go away. You can also drag windows around things and hit backspace and they'll go away. But you'll notice when I drag these windows, they were different in both directions. So if I drag from left to right, it will only highlight things that were inside the window that I dragged, and I can hit backspace. If I drag from right to left, that's what's considered to be a crossing. Not only will it pick the things that are inside the rectangle, it'll also pick everything that the rectangle touches, and I can hit backspace and make them go away. So I could select everything on my screen, hit backspace, and it will all go away, except for the origin. Um, so we've got the line tool, we've got the rectangles, we've got circles, um, there's a couple different arcs that you have. You also have the polygon tool. The polygon tool works very center, similar to the center point circle. If I click once and then twice, the next click has to do with how many sides I want that to have. So I can go from a triangle to a square to a pentagon and so on. Um, you can also rotate it. So once it's been placed, I can rotate it. If I want it to stop rotating, that's when we're going to have to get into these constraint tools up here. Um, we'll kind of get into those later, but that's where your horizontal and vertical and that kind of stuff lays if that's something that we want to do. But we'll get into those later. Um, and that's the majority of the basics. So the line, the rectangle, arcs and ellipses, circles, and polygons. Um, those are the main tools that we have, and that's the way the sketch works. When you are finished with a sketch and you're done doing whatever it is that you want to do, I have to tell the software that I'm finished. I am completed with whatever it is that I want to do. I have to click this green check mark up here to finish sketch. So once I do that, you can see all my sketch tools have gone away and I'm back into my 3D environment. I then would like to look at it back in a 3D view. I like using this cube over here. If I click on it and say isometric, it will then twist it back to see it in that 3D orientation. So then I can do any type of 3D operations I want to it. If I've decided that something like that circle is not big enough, I can come over to the sketch that's holding the, 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 the entities that I want, and I can double click that. I can go back into it, and I can continue making changes as many times as I want. So eventually you'll have a couple of sketches. Um, so maybe I've got something in this direction. You'll see that I have sketch one, I have sketch two, and I can come in and out of both of them as many times as I want to be able to move things around, line them up, change their sizes and scales. Um, so you've got the ability to edit them. You also have the ability to turn things visually on and off. So these planes right now, as I hover over them, I get this little eyeball next to each one of them. And as I click on that little eyeball, they will hide. So if the planes are kind of in your way, you can, you can hide them um, so that you don't have to look at them anymore. The same thing with sketches. If I'm done with the sketch, I can turn those sketches off so I don't have to see them anymore. And that's the basics of a 2D sketch in Onshape.